What's happening? It's Shane here. So I posted a few videos on YouTube now talking about different majors or degrees that you could go for and giving my opinion on which ones I think are scams and which ones are good opportunities. And I've also talked about the ridiculous cost of student loans and how you can go to college if you do decide to go to college for the cheapest amount possible. And as you can imagine, I've gotten a lot of hateful comments on these videos. Um, I've also gotten a lot of people telling me their stories about how they were scammed, and I've gotten some insightful comments as well. And in this video, I'd like to address some of these comments because I've had people ask me, you know, hey, I chose a degree that it's kind of worthless, but I did it, and you know, what can I do at this point? So in this video, I'm gonna break down exactly what you should do if you fell for the hype, you got a degree that was worthless and now you kind of don't know what to do with your life. So first of all, I just want to say that this is really not your fault. You know, you were forced to make a huge decision at 17 or 18 years old and society said that, you know, college is always worth it. Everybody should go to college. You need to get your college education. And society also says that you should blindly follow your passions and that's wrong as well, in my opinion. The truth is, is very, very few people end up doing what they're truly passionate about for a living. Now, there's lots of things I'm passionate about that I get to do in my free time because I make a living doing something that society has a lot of demand for. And the truth is, when it comes to your job or your career, you really need to balance passion and practicality. Now, the real first step here is to figure out what you actually like. Now, in my opinion, the Japanese really have this concept down when they talk about ikigai, which translates roughly to a reason for being. And this is basically finding a middle ground between what you're good at, what you love, what you can be paid for and what the world needs. Now, everybody's goals are going to be different. You know, some people are minimalists and they're going to be happy living off of, you know, $30,000 a year or something. Other people are not and they need a little bit more to be happy. Maybe they'd be happy living off $100,000 a year. Maybe that's your goal, six figures. Whatever your goal is, you can use this Japanese concept of ikigai to figure out what you should be doing with your life. So the first thing you want to do is start at the top, think about what you love. What are you passionate about? What makes you truly happy? And when I say truly happy, I don't mean happy in the moment, you know, because drinking soda or, you know, doing drugs and those sorts of things that are really not good for the rest of your life will make you happy for a split second. What I mean by true happiness is things that bring lasting joy to your life. You know, something that you would never get sick of. And for each of these four things, you should really make a list. And if you don't know what you're passionate about, then I really just recommend going out there and trying a bunch of different things until you find something that you really like. You know, try hiking, try improv comedy, learn to play an instrument. Just try a bunch of different things until you find something that really makes you happy. Now, once you've made a list of those things, you also want to make a list of things that you're naturally good at or naturally talented at. Now, you might be good at something but not necessarily be naturally talented at it just because you were exposed to it at a very young age and so you're just pretty good at it because of that. But make a list of all these things that you seem to be gifted at. Now I will say here that talent is overrated so just because you're not naturally talented at something doesn't mean you can't get really good at it. Hard work beats talent 99 out of 100 times. Next you want to think about what you can actually be paid for. So you want to think what jobs actually have people who are willing to pay me a salary? What real needs are out in the market right now that people are willing to pay good money for? And in this step, I really recommend only going for jobs where you can make $70,000 a year or more because there's been extensive studies on this and basically they say that your happiness caps out around seventy dollars to $90,000 depending on the study. So you wanna aim for a job that where you can make at least $70,000 a year. Unless you're an extreme minimalist where you can just go for a long time without spending any money and you're totally okay with that. But other than that, you do wanna aim for a job where you can make at least $70,000 a year. That way you can save money, retire early, and just live your best life. And then of course, you also wanna think about what the world needs. There's some things that the world needs that aren't necessarily something that you can monetize by getting a job, but that doesn't change the fact that maybe in the 
future, you'll be able to figure out how to make money from that thing. Even though there's not a stable way to make money from it now, maybe you can in the future. So you can look at trends here or just things that the world will need. Now, if you've gone through this step and you've decided, you know, college is the way to go or you have an idea for a job, great, that's awesome. But let's say you go through this step and there's not a single job out there that you're passionate about at all. It's just not your thing. Having a normal job is not your thing. Maybe you wanna be an entrepreneur, maybe you wanna be an artist or something along those lines. Well, I can tell you that there is no beaten path to go down this road. There is no, you know, $997 course that's gonna teach you everything that you need to know in order to go down this road. It's not like a college degree where if you get a good degree, you're pretty much guaranteed to get a job and you're gonna be good to go. You are going to have to get really creative and you're gonna have to figure out a way to make money from your passion if you decide to go this way. So let's just take my biggest passion most likely which is history I think that's probably my biggest passion videography and history are, are definitely both way up there I didn't decide to go this way but if I did decide to purely go for my passion I probably would have started a history YouTube channel and maybe I would have started a history blog as well and I would have known that it was probably gonna take me three to five years to make it into a full-time like really good income and I'd have to work my butt off but after three to five years of working really, really hard, I would probably have a full-time income just from doing my passion. So let's say you went to university, you got a history degree, and you probably haven't been able to find a job. Maybe you're working at Starbucks or you're driving Uber or something along those lines. This is something that you could do. You could make a YouTube channel on the side, make a blog on the side. The only thing is you're going to have to fully know and fully realize that it takes years and years to build it up. This isn't something that's gonna happen overnight where you get a job and then the next week or two weeks later you get a paycheck. It'll probably be more like two years before you get a paycheck, but eventually the money will start coming in, you'll build it up and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger. And let's say, again, going back to the history example, let's say you're not necessarily interested in starting a YouTube channel. Let's say you want to run a history museum. Well, you're gonna have to get really creative with this as well because blast your resume on job sites like monster.com is simply not enough. I mean, there's just not enough job openings out there for that to work. You're gonna have to get creative with this. You might have to figure out how to directly email a bunch of people who are the owners of museums or something along those lines. So an example of this, and I know a friend of mine did something very similar to this to get his dream job, is he was able to find a bunch of people's emails who were decision makers in his field and then he sent out personalized videos to each of their emails. He recorded a video of himself sent out a personalized video basically just talking about himself and talking about how he would be really, really good for their job and he asked them to go and get a coffee. And he said it would just be five minutes, 10 minutes, something like that, just a really, really quick coffee chat. And he was able to get basically his dream job by doing that. But as you can see, this is not the same thing as just blasting your resume out on job sites. I mean, if you enter into a career where there's not very many jobs, that normal way of getting a job simply is not going Going to work. Even if you go to a bunch of career fairs, your chances of getting a job are very, very low. You have to do something different in order to stand out. You have to get creative. Now, one thing I do want to mention here is the concept of risk tolerance and how you should think about this in terms of your background and where you come from. So I came from a very poor background. I was homeless at 14 years old and you know I was very poor growing up and there was no way I had anybody else to fall back. Back on. So I think when you come from a background like that where you don't really have anything to fall back on, you do need to kind of lean towards being a little bit more practical. And once you, you know, get a really good solid career, then you can kind of have a base to launch off of. Whereas if you come from a background where you have a lot of support, then I think it's a little more realistic for you to go for your passions rather than going for, you know, the practical pragmatic road. And then of course, another option is if you do decide to go down the more practical, pragmatic road, just make sure you do your research, make sure you go into something where you absolutely know that you're gonna have a stable job in the next 20 years. You know, AI is gonna be disrupting a lot of different careers, professions, even industries in the next 20 years. So just make sure that whatever field you go into is one where you're absolutely going to have a stable job and you're not gonna be 
wasting your time if you do decide to go back to school or if you decide to take the time to learn the skills that you'll need to go into whatever industry that you choose. And I think this deserves an entire video to itself, but the two careers that you really can't go wrong with or the two fields, I guess you could say, are technology and health. I mean, if you go into technology or health, you're pretty much gonna be good to go. Obviously, you still wanna do your research on each one of those, depending on which ones you go into, because some are better than others. But overall, technology and health are super, super solid careers to go into. Make sure to check out my videos right here, and then go ahead smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and comment down below any ideas or any comments, criticisms, etc. that you have about this video. Thank you so much and bye for now.